The first thing we're going to do is draw the circle, which is the outer perimeter of the stone onto our paper. Now I turn the stone upside down in order to do any picking up, dropping it down, um, looking at. Now you want to hold the stone upside down and the tip of the plier squeeze. There are some grips there and you're going to squeeze your hand just a little bit so that it stays locked in. And now I can do whatever I want with the stone without it flying across the room. So we're going to do three spheres here in order to do a number of versions so you can understand the different types of prongs and what it might look like from the top view. Now we're gonna forget about all the cuts inside the stone and making the drawing fancy right now. We really just need the circle and we need to now get some dimensions. So as the stone is upside down, I'm going to take the two sides, which is all sides, it's 8.85 millimeters, and I'm going to jot that down. We'll use this last one as a diagram of 8.85 millimeters. Okay, so that's what we know we're working with. Now, there are different ways to add prongs to a round stone. Now this you can see has four prongs and this is 18 karat white gold and on an earring it's a little bit it can turn around so it's not really particular which way the prongs are going but we do want to notice that the prongs are the basket and the seat that we need to draw underneath the stone and one of these circles will be the underneath so we'll just leave it right there now from the top view which will be this drawing right here you're going to see that the prongs are evenly spaced and of course use the ruler or i eyeball it but this is where the prongs are going to go evenly spaced to best hold in the stone evenly. Now I'm just gonna mark it with a couple of little lines and now I'm gonna show you from a top view what the prong might look like. Now this is metal that I'm drawing and these are claw prongs. So I'm gonna show you again what that looks like in the metal. It's curling over the stone. Oops, that's what you don't want to happen. It's curling over the stone and forming a seat and a secure place for the stone to sit and lock in, and the metal is bent over. So this is the metal that's going down into the basket and then curling over the top of the stone. Now, the two options of prongs that you have really are claw, which is a little dressier, um, would be for fancier stones and diamonds. One of the goals of a claw prong is to blend the shape of the prongs into the cuts of the diamond, which you can see, you know, it kind of hides it is the goal. And you can take the time to kind of color this in a little bit. And we can talk more about details of how that prong might look in the long run later on. The other option would be a, a rounded prong. So the prong is drawn both inside and outside of the circle, just like these have an outside part, which is the prong curling up, and you have the part going over the stone. So these are the two options of prongs. I can just kind of color it and you can get an idea. Now in this circle, we're going to draw underneath the stone. This can be a little bit tricky. The first thing we're gonna notice is this seat right here. 
Every prong, or most, I should say, has a seat underneath the stone so the stone can sit down and then have the prongs coming over. But that seat is really holding everything in. So we're gonna start by drawing that, which is just another circle inside the stone circle. So it's pretty much hidden under, I'm just gonna use one circle smaller and I'm eyeballing it, but here you go. And that's the seat, okay? The seat is coming, you know, a little bit inside of this line, but you can either draw an additional line inside here, which I guess would make sense, or you can get the idea that that is the seat, the outer rim. So we're going to use this entire part of the real estate underneath the stone as the seat, okay? The prongs are going to come and be connected to the seat, okay? So this is in a little bit of a different orientation, but I'm going to estimate here that that is the prongs that will curl over. Now. The other thing to see, and I'm going to use this one as an example, is there is a double basket here. So this inner form, shape, wire, and the seat, which is here, is connected by the prongs. Now you can see that the inner basket is smaller than the top basket. So we can go ahead and draw that. And I can make, you know, it can be significantly smaller, which looks a little bit more dramatic. I prefer it. And I'm just gonna look at all the options so you can see what's best. Okay. And we're gonna go smaller now. And there's the inner basket. So the prongs now are going to connect here. If you want, uh, lightly color in these lines because it will help you visualize that that's the metal. And you can do the same here. And one of the things that I like to say about jewelry design is it is an art form. So feeling that these perfect, these initial sketches have to be perfect is incorrect. This is the fun part where you're thinking through the design. So we now have the inner basket and the outer basket of this prong design. And we have to create this connection here. Is this connection going to be straight or is it gonna have a little bit of a bend to it, something that creates some kind of elegance? Depending on how much real estate you have here, we do have freedom to create some interesting design elements underneath. But for today, we're gonna to go as simple as it gets and we're gonna just do nice straight prongs here. And we'll talk about what the actual dimension of these wires are later. We're just trying to get the understanding of what we need to create here. So these prongs are going to extend beyond this in order to hold our stone on. And we will talk about how long they need to be as well. So more or less, this is the underneath of a prong setting. You can see here that I did not go straight and I did a um, tapered design and the underneath, not having good luck here, the underneath is kind of a star-like shape. It is not round like we did here. So 
this is a more advanced setting and we'll talk about those options, but just to understand how it works, this is the most common setting option and then you can start to get fancy. Okay, so moving on, we will look at the stone from the side view and we'll start to go over the options of how we can make this really unique.